Hi there, my name is Ben Hutton, and it's a privilege to speak to you at ASC 2022. Or it would be if I'd have been able to make it. Sadly, that wasn't possible, but you still get to hear about Jason Schema. Lucky you. I've been working on the Jason Schema specification for a number of years. I'm currently the specification or project lead. Maybe you've used Jason Schema before or maybe you're here to learn about it for the first time. Today, I'm not going to be showing you how to use it, but I will be sharing stories of its impact from JSON Schema in production, a series where I talk with organizations of all sizes about their use of JSON Schema in the real world. First, there's something you should know. You're probably already using JSON Schema, you just don't know it yet. If you use any of the most popular code editors or IDEs and you're editing a JSON configuration file, if you've noticed autocompletion or IntelliSense, you're already using JSON Schema. JSON Schema comes as standard with VS Code, for example. You don't even need to configure it. It just works. JSON Schema is designed to be used for the validation of JSON data, but it can be used to generate forms or even code in the form of classes or types. If you're using or writing open API or async API specification documents, those have embedded JSON schemas. One of the issues we found common in the community is the perception that JSON schema isn't ready to be used in production. This is understandable given we publish the JSON schema specification through the IETF as personal drafts, and according to the IETF, drafts shouldn't be used in production. However, for reasons I won't go into today, we don't consider JSON schema as a draft, and we consider the implications for every breaking change we make. You might ask, are there some organizations using it given it's a draft? Should we be using it in production? Is it safe and responsible to do so? If you've seen one of my talks before, you've probably seen the slide that follows this one. Yes, you can use JSON Schema in production, much like these organizations. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, but for a long time, I've wanted to be able to share a little more of the specifics around what these logos mean. So let's give it a little refresh and a slim down. There we go, that's more like it. Over the past year, I've created case studies with each of these organizations, some as video chats, some as more formally written case studies. There might even be a few which are almost done and not quite over the line, but I'm going to share as much of their stories as we have time for today. Before we dive in, let's get a bit of context on what we're going to see today. JSON Schema was designed with validation in mind. However, the level of language support has meant we've seen new use cases emerge, such as form generation and code generation. While well, interoperable data validation may seem like a simple thing to be asking for, the impact when done right is impressive and very often a time saver. Rather than focus on the how of JSON schema, we're going to be focusing on the so what. Why is it worth your time investing in using JSON schema? What does it give in return? Okay, let's go. Food in the UK and the States is not like food in Japan. Most noticeably, it's much fresher and people cook more from scratch. Many cookpad users pay to upload their recipes if they want to store and share more than just a few. Cookpad boasts 100 million active users and north of 5 million recipes shared. Already leading the market, Cookpad looked to diversify and connecting local producers with individual buyers is something that makes sense for them. A fresh food marketplace. Enter Cookpad Mart. 
Here's how uh, a member of the development team wrote about their situation. A service that delivers delicious ingredients to use, street vendors and local producers register products on a daily basis. When registering a product, the seller must accurately enter various quality assurance information, including the expiry date. The problem was, when your marketplace has specific and evolving data requirements, static forms aren't going to cut it. They're just not a good option. Complex logic and duplicate validation were starting to make the code harder to maintain. Lots of people like spaghetti. No one wants spaghetti code. What's more, some parts of the data would be manually validated in-house through a product screening process. This approach simply wasn't going to scale, and they knew it. They considered continuing to write custom code, but maintainability was fast becoming a concern. Cookpad needed a common schema to contain their form requirements. JSON schema was ultimately the solution of choice. With JSON schema, Cookpad reduced the deficit submissions or food submissions of missing data from 10% to zero. All the tricky complex validation rules encoded into JSON schema. This also reduced the burden on the in-house manual review team. Further, developers of Cookpad started to see that building forms using JSON schema cut down their development time in half. A win for developers too. Imagine what new features, I mean technical debt, your team can repay with all that extra time. Tyler Technologies provides the public sector with software solutions. It's often the case that the public sector simply doesn't have the budget to build software themselves and likely lacks the resources to collaborate and co-fund development with other jurisdictions. Imagine the logistics. Tyler Technologies boasts a large revenue and number of developers. Looking at that client retention rate too, 98%. Let's find out why they needed JSON Schema. One aspect of what Tyler offers is a multi-tenant solution for its clients, but with customization. If you've ever worked with forms, you can know how creating variations by hand in code for different clients will be time consuming. Clients needing customization wasn't just them being picky. Often the requirements were strict and defined in law. Can you imagine, hey Bob, a new law comes in soon and we need extra fields in that form. What do you mean it's going to take several weeks? Being able to easily customise forms and validation rules to each client is time-consuming and costly if done in code. Additionally, Tyler wanted to be able to give the power to modify forms and validation rules to the client, a tricky requirement to fulfil. Now we know the problem, what's the solution? The solution needed to be simple yet powerful a no-code solution to allow for easy customization. JSON Schema provided the way. Tyler was pleased to find industry-wide adoption of a solution they were already partly familiar with from OpenAPI, and were impressed by the breadth of available tools. Let's see how JSON Schema was utilized. Tyler could create JSON schemas and use Formly to generate forms on the fly. Tyler's clients could also provide their own schemas for custom forms and validation rules. Imagine that previous client call not even happening. The next time a client needs to add a field to their form, they can do it self-service. They don't even need to call you. The results? When you can show clients a change based on feedback during the meeting as opposed to next week, you're reducing that feedback loop. 
That's a sure way you can impress clients and keep them happy. More you ask? Sure. Development costs reduced. Not only was updating the forms and validation easier, but a developer wasn't required to make these sorts of changes. And the time to resolve bugs related to custom data structures was slashed. Last time I checked, no developer really likes spending time fixing bugs. We should just write bug-free code, right? Sadly, we're not there quite yet. If you're a fan of Yahoo Pipes, you might also be a fan of Zapier, the go-to solution for stitching tech stuffs together. Their aim is to make automation work for everyone, and they surely make it easier. No-code, low-code are still pretty hot buzzwords, but Zapier has been around for a while and boasts over 5,000 integrations and over 30 million users. Zapier sees two new apps join every day. Oh, and you may have noticed, if you're like me, that Zapier recently got a new logo. There we go. Zapier continues to grow its number of integrations and once that number got so high, manually reviewing submissions didn't scale as well. I'm sure you all really love code review. Each submission requires a code review and checking for specific outputs. Developers submitting integrations would need to upload their packaged integrations and configure it through a web-based user interface. This web-based UI wasn't giving developers enough power. Ultimately, if the developer experience was better somewhere else, Zapier was going to hurt. Developers called for a more powerful experience, a CLI, but that brought its challenges. Validation needed to be distributable across different code bases and platforms. How could we solve this? Zapier considered automating code reparsing, but that was tricky and pretty fragile. Identical validation code was needed to work on the client side and the server side. I'm sure you all love porting validation tests and validation code between programming languages in both directions. A solution that provided interoperability between programming languages was required and JSON Schema delivered. Seriously, get JSON Schema a cape or something. I might be biased, might. Let's um, take a look. Zapier defines the JSON Schema and pushes it to both the web-based platform UI and the platform CLI. Developers can now validate the packages they are intending to submit are valid. Client side, in the CLI. When the CLI validates successfully, it's going to validate the same on Zapier's servers. Happy developers. Developer experience really matters. Today, all integrations are backed by JSON schema validation. Write once, validate everywhere consistently, is a specific example of where the don't repeat yourself principle is applied well. Can you imagine if the CLI claimed your integration was valid, only to be rejected by the server? You might have ended up looking elsewhere. Okay, JSON Schema has helped keep external developers happy, but what about internally? How do you feel about large-scale data migrations? Concerning? Worried? At Zapier, they do them with confidence. Handling user-supplied code is a challenge, and moving it around in a database, that's another level of complexity. Six Rever Systems, recently acquired by Shopify, is a fulfillment solutions provider, or in their words, provide solutions for warehousing automation. Installed in over 100 facilities with over 400 employees, with their installations fulfilling 
a lot of units every week. The question is, how are they handling all that telemetry data? How do they manage defining and updating their data structures? Six River Systems' current crown jewel is Chuck, an autonomous warehouse robot which aids pickers in packing and moving products. The real smarts is how Chuck connects to a command and control center, creates dynamic zoning, and makes sure the correct items are picked, and seems to make the workers the work of pickers easier, more efficient, and even enjoyable. You've likely heard the mantra adapt or die in reference to business, and fulfillment solutions providers are not exempt. Six River Systems went through a period of rapid growth, which presented new challenges and the calling in of technical debt. Different domain experts needed to collaborate more effectively on defining data structures. Old deprecated tooling needed to be replaced for sustainability reasons. The current way things worked was going to keep increasing and simply wasn't going to scale well. How were Six River Systems going to break through this evolution barrier, sustaining the growth and continuing to grow? They considered popular data definition formats, such as Protobuf and Avro, but found these had specific tie-ins that left them inflexible. The solution needed to be interoperable across multiple programming languages. Being easy to learn and use incrementally would be a great convincer here too. Of course, JSON Schema. Jake explained JSON Schema can be added minimally to existing systems without a problem, adding to the selling points. With JSON Schema, different domain experts could collaborate. They found it easier to learn and understand as a neutral and interoperable format, giving each familiarity. The schemas are built and can be used by the robots and the command and control center, even though they use different programming languages. Plus one point for interoperability and data validation. The real kicker for Six River Systems was seeing teams collaborate and release new hardware without needing help from Jake's bridging team. Talk about trying to make yourself obsolete. Jake's team aimed to be an expert interface between domain experts and assist in creating and developing new solutions. When the teams he usually worked with could do it by themselves, Jake's team was freed up to tackle more challenging problems. Six River Systems evolved to move faster and gain the ability to adapt quicker to changing requirements. What about the developers? They really liked JSON Schema too. Imagine the chaos it would cause if the robots couldn't process instructions from the command and control center, or worse, got the interpretation wrong. Being able to generate typed SDKs and TypeScript interfaces from a single source of truth gave assurances over how communications happens in production. Jake shared that Six River Systems now deploys with confidence, knowing things will work before the code reaches the robots. A luxury indeed. I bet that feels good. Convinced to give Jason Schema another look? Wondering where to go next? Wondering if your company can employ someone to join us working on Jason Schema full time? Well, I've got to ask. Seriously, come and talk to me. To watch the video recording from Jason Schema in production, head over to jasonschema.works. There are written case studies found on the jason-schema.org blog. If you want to dive into the docs, check out the Understanding Jason Schema site. If you're looking to get a specific question answered, you can use Stack Overflow or join our Slack community. Or join the Slack community if you just want to see what's going on. 
and we're also on Twitter. Finally, we have regular weekly open community working meetings every Monday. You can find a link to those on the json-schema.org homepage. A huge thanks to all the previous and current team, contributors and community, implementation developers, and those who are willing to collaborate and share details of the case studies I've shared with you today. And thank you to our sponsors for our Open Collective, Retool, Ace and KPI Initiative, Stoplight, Airbnb, and API Deck. And of course, Postman, now employing people, including myself, full time to work on JSON Schema. If you're interested in sponsoring JSON Schema, please visit our Open Collective or feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Although we have a few full-time employees now, there's still so much more we can do. Thank you for having me here at ASC 2022. My name's Ben Hutton, and thank you for listening. Uh, I'll be open for any questions you might have. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or through our Slack server. Thank you.